in this session we'll discuss about energy currents known as nadis and the development of chakras we have gone through general description and understanding of nadis and chakras here i want to focus the exactly how energy currents evolve and how energy currents create the bigger network of energy the system called chakras let me take you to very wonderful discussion which somewhere briefly i have done in this tantra and kundalini seminar will have a better understanding of the development of energy currents and their interaction with each other and development of chakras and in fact even development of brain let us look at how a fetus evolves and why it evolves the way it evolves how it evolves is very much known today to our modern science or medical community why it evolves the way it evolves that is a subject matter of philosophers more precisely tantric philosophers right after conception on 21st day let's say on 18th day heart appears and very quickly within few days time the human heart resembles heart of a fish very simple it's a tube and within few days time it divides into extremely primitive functional if it were a fish it would have been just fine evolution of heart would have stopped at that phase here it doesn't stop there but rather within a week that is by 28th day it changes its shape it evolves a little further it resembles the heart of a frog let me tell you why that is how it has been described in tantric literature the reason why it happens first thing human being is pinnacle of the creation everything that has happened into the creation that automatically is covered and subsumed in the human creation when fetus is growing it is understood that it needs some basic mechanism to supply nourishment throughout body as well as it needs basic infrastructure to communicate certain ideas thoughts feelings sentiments from one part of the body to the next but the most primitive function that a living being needs to accomplish is the supply of nourishment throughout the body that is the most primitive function little bit more than that is needed when 
the consciousness in that body is expected to perform relatively more evolved, structured, complex function. That is, the flow of information from one part of the body to the other, from one organ of the body to the other. So when a primitive, the very first thing therefore is when the conception takes place and cells are multiplying, then immediately, soon after there is a little bit body of matter created, this need is felt that now it is time to create a system whereby nutrients are supplied appropriately to every part of this matter, every part of this body of matter called body. Well, heart was created for that purpose. But there is something that predates the appearance of heart. There is something there that predates the union of egg and sperm. There is something there that predates when men and women, male and female, ever met. There is something that predates the very conception itself. That's called consciousness, awareness. That's called soul. That's called pure being. Now, this pure being, consciousness, awareness, Kundalini Shakti has entered this particular tiny fetus, which is still hardly just a little bit, maybe as, the, as, that, uh, as the size of an ant. Now, even smaller than that, the need is felt that we need a mechanism to supply the nourishment, nutrients. Heart was created. Immediately, the consciousness, the very unique, specific, precise, individual consciousness that has claimed the ownership of that fetus says, no, 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 this is not efficient. This is not what I want. And who has claimed the ownership? The individual soul, the consciousness. The very unique, uh, precise, particularized Kundalini Shakti. He said, no, this is not appropriate. You can supply the blood, but my plan is to have much bigger complex body. Also, I need a system of communication from one part of this body to the another part, from one limb to, from one organ to another organ. This basic raw, this crude kind of system of just simply plumping the blood in which nutrients are absorbed, that is too inappropriate for my purpose. That's inefficient. That does not, that does not fulfill my goal and objective. Why, sir? Because I need this body to be able to live in the water, to be able to live on the land, to be able to, uh, to breathe air from outside, to be able to absorb oxygen from the skin. I need this body to crawl to walk, to hop, to swim, to um, lay down diagonal, stand upward, lay down you know, on the back, lay down on its tummy. And this kind of heart, it's not good enough to perform all those functions. And furthermore, <coughs> I need a body that is greater ability to feel more complex kind of emotions. And this heart is not good enough to do that, to manage all that. You know? Like, remember big computers in olden days, 50 years ago at the University of Pennsylvania, I saw a computer is still preserved there. The size of that computer is almost the size of this entire auditorium. 
big, big wires, thick wires. And capacity of that computer is much, 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 much smaller than today's calculator. So, heart, the consciousness says that this heart is primitive. So, in response to the need of and demand of the consciousness, again, the great architect, nature, came up with the next model. It took another six, seven days to modify the heart. Thus, by 28th day of the conception, the heart turned into as that of heart of a frog. Again, consciousness looks at it, said, no, 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 this is not appropriate. Let's revise it. So, it revised it. Now it looks like the heart of a snake, heart of a reptile. Consciousness says, no, still it's not good enough. Then it got revised again. And then there emerged a tiny little heart. It is still extremely little, but exactly what a human heart looks like. With all the potentials to grow as time permits. To grow into full-fledged human heart. By 6th, 7th week, it's all completed, done. In fact, by 35th day, that process, that decision is made, model is approved, and design is approved. And there, and before that, you know, up to th first 35 days, heart is really growing quite fast in proportion to the rest of the body. It's growing very fast. By 49th day, wow, it's, it's in proportion to the rest of the body, heart occupies much bigger you know, uh, place in the entire body. But suddenly, when the whole model is completed, all the requirements have been met, blue blueprint has been approved, immediately something unique happens. By sixth, seventh week, the growth of the heart suddenly is brought at the uh, rate of the growth of the total body. But suddenly, brain, the head begins to grow at extremely fast pace. And tantrics tell us why does it happen. Because by the time this heart is created, and by the way, on 35th day, lungs and brain begin to appear. And that appearance means just appear. It's not actual formation. Because idea is being conceived. Just as when you start constructing a house and basic, basic things, by the time you lay the foundation, meanwhile, your rest of the supplies, your construction materials start arriving. They are just arriving because when you lay your foundation, by that time you are exactly clear. Before you lay your foundation and you are just about to start working around, you know exactly where the bathroom, toilet will go, where the shower will go, where the kitchen will go, where the living room will go, where you are going to have your library. And also the idea that where the closet will be, where the staircase will be, all those things are there, otherwise it's chaos, it's mess. So, brain begins to grow. And it's a very amazing process. Here, the human heart, with its all feelings, with its all understanding, with its all intelligence, has come to its full-blown phase in terms of its future planning. And by the way, heart continues growing all the way to our teenies, puberty age, and when we become adult, then at some point it, com it completely becomes settled. So, consciousness in the heart, life, again, let me tell you, 
life begins with heart, not with brain. And it is the life force in the heart or in the space in the heart, space around the heart that determines that what kind of brain, what kind of nervous system, what kind of organs and limbs are required in order to express all the thoughts, feelings, sentiments, emotions, memories, and all expressions that are deposited in the energy and consciousness that fills the heart, that fills the space inside the heart, that fills the space around the heart. And there is so much there. Tiny little heart is still the size of hardly maybe a big size, maybe a mustard size. That's it. That's it. All that is contained there. And that consciousness is now impatiently telling too fast, quick. I have only, you know, uh, out of you know, uh, 36 weeks, five weeks are already gone. I have only 31 weeks left. Therefore, in response to all that consciousness, feelings, sentiments, emotions, memories, and future plans to accomplish this, accomplish that, heart knows far in advance due to the fact that entire, uh, entire phenomena called destiny, Providence is deposited in the heart, in the space inside the heart. Therefore, that space that has been filled by the consciousness, filled by the power of providence and destiny, exactly knows that at what phase in life I will need such and such kind of mechanism, such and such kind of limb and organ with uh, such and such kind of disease, with such and such kind of uh, power of will, with such and such kind of healing power, will be needed. It knows it. Therefore, it tells the rest of the body, mind, organism, and this growing process that I need nervous system. I need a brain that can, you know, work in my office. Heart is not an office. Heart is the seat of the soul. Brain is the uh, office where souls, all the works are done and the command is issued. Some of that command is at a very conscious level. Some of the command is very unconscious level. In response to heart's needs and demands, then the nervous system begins to evolve. Brain begins to evolve. Before the actual brain, before the physical brain, physical part of it, before the physical part of our nervous system, respiratory system, circulatory system, endocrine gland system, you know, begins to take shape, something even more powerful and important happens. That is the creation of energy currents. Not ease. Those energy currents, they are like even, it's like, with or without having the body, those energy currents start shooting in different direction. According to yoga, according to tantra, what happens in first 12 weeks, that is during the first trimester, is far, far, far more than what happens even throughout life. That much activity is happening during the first uh, uh, 12 weeks of our conception. So thus the energy channels evolve. What are those energy channels, energy currents? Energy currents are the, like the waves of consciousness and energy emanating from the very center of our being, from the very core of our being, from the very core of this primordial shakti called Kundalini Shakti. And each current each wave is actually the wave, the spanda of the consciousness. And each wave appears in this oceanic existence of Kundalini Shakti. Sudha Sindho Madhe, in this Sudha Sindho, this, uh, the ocean of immortal nectar, immortal ambrosia, these waves are arising in response to the inherent um, spanda, inherent intention, inherent volition to see itself in such and such and such and such manner. 
in response to this volition, in response to this power of will, in response to this intention, there arises a wave of energy and consciousness. Ananda Lahri, Chaitanya Lahri, Chida Lahri. No. The wave of consciousness, wave of joy, wave of beauty, the wave of desire to see itself in numberless manifest manner. And that is how the energy currents evolve. Each energy current is an expression of consciousness of Kundalini Shakti. Each energy current, therefore, is unique rep representation of unique thought, feeling, sentiment, emotion, desire, uh, um, attachment, anger, hatred, jealousy, greed, love, compassion, giving, receiving, Repulsion, compulsion, you know, attraction. Each energy current is a complete independent wave, although completely an integral part of this oceanic existence of consciousness. Okay. Uh, Sphurattam Atmanah Pashid, this is one of the beautiful scripture of Sri Vidya, the tantric literature of Sri Vidya called um, Yogini Hridayam, the heart of the Yogini. Sphurattam Atmanah Pashit Tada Chakrasya Sambhavah The Atmanah Sphurattam Pashit in response to her volition, in response, in response to her desire, in response to her own will to see herself, to see her own uh, pulsation, to see her own manifestation, there suddenly evolves chakra. How does chakra evolve? Chakra evolves as a result of many, many, many energy currents evolution. So let's say in that spontaneous, timeless state of consciousness, there came a wave of volition, a wave of intention, a wave of desire. That is, I am one, may I see my multifarious forms. Or, I wonder how beautiful I look like. Same thing that which makes you stand in front of mirror and watch your face, watch yourself from so many angles. Same thing that which makes you stand in front of mirror, hold your comb in your hand and fix your hair 20 times and making sure that every single strand, every single hair is according to your liking and exactly on the place where you wish to see it. There is a satisfaction in seeing yourself in a uniquely desired manner. That feeling, that force, that emotion is a wave. In response to that wave, you pick up your comb and you stand in front of a mirror, you know, and after you have done everything, then you have few more tiny, tiny hair left, you call it eyebrow. Then you start fixing your eyebrow. What is making you to do that? It's your own desire. that wishes to see all minute details of its own uniqueness. Because you are unique. That force is called energy current. That force is called Ananda Lahari. That force is called Saundarya Lahari. No. That force is called wave of beauty, wave of bliss, wave of karma lahari, wave of desire, primordial feeling 
to see and experience and rejoice in the minutest details of your uniqueness. That is what is called energy current. That energy current is extremely powerful, so extremely powerful, so powerful that it, it just literally forces your cells to start producing certain chemicals to inhibit certain type of growth of the cell. You start pushing the agenda of growing certain kind of cells. Cells which they must beat in coordination and collaboration with other cells. That cell, those such cells are used in the formation of your heart. Otherwise it can grow into just a regular cell. It is in response to this wave of, this wave of energy current nadis, which has its origin in the vast only oceanic existence of consciousness filling the space inside the heart. In response to that, immediately cells begin to inhibit certain type of growth, continue, and in some other cluster of cells, other kind of growth are just perfectly allowed. So thus, <coughs> suddenly there are certain cells, their limitless capacities, limitless privileges are taken away. Only few privileges are given that you grow into such and such kind of cluster of cells with such and such unique qualities because what is needed is with the, with the multiplication of such and such cells, um, lungs are supposed to be created. Brains is supposed to be created. No. Then toenails are supposed to be created. A lining of the intestine is supposed to be created. You know, where you know, they have enough mucus to withstand the powerful, fiery, you know, what you call gastric acid, as acidic juices. And it's still the inner lining of the intestine is not affected by this fiery stuff that goes on so that the food is digested but your own body is not digested and cooked. You know? So all those different kinds of cells are created due to the fact that now so many different kinds of waves of intentions, waves of you know, uh, volitions have started. Such waves are called energy currents. One wave. of one kind, with very unique characteristic, with very unique power. This wave dances in a very unique way. You stand at the, you stand at the beach, try to count, try to identify and see the waves that are arising and subsiding in the ocean. And you will be surprised that not is there are never two waves perfectly alike. Never perfectly alike. And it, a cluster of waves, two waves, ten waves, twenty waves, hundred waves, they move in a cluster. Each tiny, tiny ripple has a unique characteristic. And it, they are moving in a cluster. And that movement is like a dance. All those hundred waves, completely unique, hundred tiny, tiny ripples, completely unique in their own right. And it dancing, moving in a dancing style together, creating a much bigger wave and slamming against a rock. Then there is another gigantic wave coming slightly from different angle. And that gigantic wave is also made up, let's say, 500 different, different uh, undercurrents and many, many other smaller, smaller, you know, uh, you know uh, what you call, 
waves. That also comes. Sometimes it may crash against that rock. Sometimes it may crash against the receding wave. Sometimes one wave comes, maybe smaller but much, much faster, and collides with another one and becomes part of it while still retaining its some of the unique characteristics that is going on constantly that is going on in the ocean. That is exactly happening here when our body is being formed. Waves of energy currents, they are just arising, passing through. Tiny ones are becoming part of the big one and eight tiny ones are not losing their self-identity completely and totally. So internal, there is there is an internal dance within that big energy current and that big gigantic energy current is moving in particular direction and sometimes there is another energy current coming from another direction and moving, you know, and passing through it, crashing into each other, sometimes dissolving into each other, sometimes just simply giving a new shape and new form to each other and thus they continue their work. And all that is happening in this oceanic existence of consciousness that fills the space inside the heart. And that is how there arrives. There begins all these energy currents. So there comes, suppose, let's say, another energy currents here. Then comes another energy currents from somewhere. Then comes another energy current. Wherever these prominent energy currents meet, a chakra is created. Chakra means here a big whirlpool, a big, you know, what do you call? Uh, powerful matrix of energy. A powerful, you know, energy field where so many different energy currents with their unique qualities and characteristics are meeting. Dissolving into each other, retaining their unique characteristics, performing certain functions, and creating a system whereby the energies flow in every direction, you know, performing unique function. So here, as you see, for example, this is a, a place. Definitely, compared to everywhere else, this one is very powerful place. Center of this whole thing is this place. This particular spot is the center. You know? And then from there, all these different energy currents are moving, creating it's like different petals, different, you know. So this is how the energy currents and chakras are. Then finally, energy currents move downward from heart. A big, powerful <coughs> vortex of energy is created right below heart. That's called solar plexus. A big, powerful vortex is created above the heart in the eyebrow area. In between, there are so many smaller energy currents because this is just an example I gave you. There are many, many such uh, uh, places. There, there are very many such points of reference in terms of time and space where such energy vortexes are being created. That's why there are many, many chakras. At each chakra, there are many, many currents crossing, crisscrossing. 
Each energy current represents, each energy current is imbued with, each energy current is infused with unique kind of uh, power, quality, characteristics, and attribute. And thus, each energy current is called a goddess, a deity. And a chakra is made of many, many, many deities and goddesses. The center of the chakra is, however, is one homogeneous energy current. One homogeneous, sorry, um, and, you know, vortex of energy. That particular shakti, the shakti right at the center, perfectly balanced state of all those, you know, 10, 20 or hundreds of energy currents. That energy is called the central deity. When you use the word deity, goddess, that is when this whole science takes an overtone of spirituality and mysticism. Forget that part. Don't use the term deity. Don't use the term goddess. Don't use the term god. Don't use the term divinity. Use the term energy. Then the same very phenomena begins to fall in the range of science. Use that knowledge, scientific knowledge, for health and healing. It, begins, it becomes part of our medical science. Use that knowledge for something else. It begins to become a foundation for other form of science. This is how our energy currents and chakras evolve. And it is in response to these energy currents and chakras, our body evolves. In fact, evolution of body precedes the evolution of chakras, not other way around. It is in response to the vortex of energy. It is in response to the formation of energy. A locus point has been created. A container is created. That is how body evolves. In the case of less evolved creatures, right from the very beginning, heart itself doesn't evolve so you know in a complex manner. It is like a fish. The function of the heart in the fish is to keep pushing the blood in and out. It's not a big deal. It's just one big chunk of flesh with few bones here and there to support the structure. Nervous system so evolved, sorry, nervous system evolved only to the point which is necessary, you know, for the fish to understand where is the food and how to grab and how to swallow. Finished. In time of mating, how to you know, produce eggs and procreate. Entire purpose is completed. Their, their uh, ability to sense pain and pleasure and their ability to express a multiple range of emotions is very limited. Therefore, there wasn't a need for a complex system of nervous system, brain, and the energy currents, and chakras. So we'll say, well, the chakras in those creatures do not exist. I'll say, potentials exist, but not the chakras. What about Kundalini? Kundalini exists, but in its very, very, very primitive, primitively awakened form. That's why the body evolved that way. That is the anatomy of energy currents and chakras. Bottom line of this discussion is that is in response to that evolution of consciousness, energy currents evolve in response to the evolution of energy currents and their crisscrossing and powerful, smaller, powerful uh, waves and smaller waves 
chakras evolve and in response to the chakras our uh, sophisticated organs evolve and in order to support the movement of those organs and in order to support the additional function of the those organs and move the take the body move around and in response to you know uh, get the information from outside take the information outward you know and so on our limbs also evolve and the efficiency of the function of our limbs is in response to the the powerful outburst of consciousness that is trying to express itself within itself and that which is trying to express itself for the reality, the consciousness, the vast world that is outside itself. That is how this body evolves, chakras evolve, energy currents evolve, heart evolves, brain evolves. No? That is the anatomy of or let's say the history of the evolution of energy currents and chakras.